Hey everyone, it's Cameron. It's good to be with you. Um, it has been since June since we've had one of these sort of family church video updates to just catch you up on what's been going on and what's coming up. Uh, and it is now mid-August and I thought it's it's time to do it. So here we are. Um, to start, I just wanted to, to start with uh, an acknowledgement once again of the strangeness of our day, especially as it relates to coronavirus. Uh, we are all having to sacrifice a lot. A lot of the rhythms that we've come to really love and appreciate, a lot of uh, just just the natural ability to gather together um, and so on and so forth, and it is hard. But that said, I wanted to start with a call to invite you into the avenues for community that we still do have. Um, there is massive biblical precedent for the Christians making the focal point of their church life uh, the things that happen in small groups and in homes. From the rhythm of, of the early church that we see in Acts 2, meeting both in the temple, but then from house to house, in homes, breaking bread, discussing the scriptures, praying together, caring for one another, meeting one another's needs. Um, up through, you know, it, later in the book of Acts, we see that in certain cities, the primary expression of church was a network, it was as a network of house churches. Um, and so, I know that the, the degree of lockdown and the distancing required has gone on far longer than most of us, I'll speak for myself, far longer than I um, have expected. And, and only in hindsight, we have to be very clear, only in hindsight will we be able to know if it was too much for too long or not enough for too short uh, to, to do what we're trying to accomplish. Um, but, but for our part, all that aside, the elders of Dwarf Hope Northeast are still convinced that avoiding large indoor gatherings, um, wearing masks when necessary, and just joining in, playing our part in the citywide effort to curb the virus's spread is a significant and important way that we can continue to love our neighbors as ourselves and seek their welfare and health. Uh, and for our church community's welfare and health as well. But but for our, for our city as well. So who knows when the coronavirus will pass? Uh, who knows whenever our city and our, our nation will feel that it's safe to sort of resume something more like uh, business as usual? Uh, I certainly don't know. Uh, but we do want to call you, however long it is, to press into the avenues of community that we do have. Um, many of us have, have been on the fence sort of waiting for things to blow over. Um, but man, when you do that, you could see six months of your life, a year of your life go by and you haven't really taken advantage of what God has, ha has for you in community. Or, or, or you may have even been in violation of his commands to gather with his people and, and to be together and to do the kinds of things that he had in mind when he created the church. Um, and so for us right now, that looks like we, we have community groups that are continuing to gather, some of them as well. The majority of them have even made the transition to Sunday morning house churches where we are hearing biblical teaching, praying together, discussing the scriptures together, taking communion together, uh, singing together, and so forth. Most of those are in small groups, outdoors um, for safety. Um, but we encourage you to join those. We, we have our, our early morning prayer on Tuesday morning that meets over Zoom. We may be starting one in person as well here before too long. Um, and then we're talking even about other small group settings for the fall to kind of meet different needs that exist around the community. Um, as always, I want you to hear this. If you are in one of these particularly vulnerable populations to COVID-19, or, or if you feel especially strong, if, you, if your conviction is that you really need to avoid risk during the season, for whatever reason, we honor that. And, and we do not want you to, 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 to break that or whatever. We want you to feel encouraged to stay the course that you need to. Uh, and do that by just engaging with us digitally or, or whatever. Um, as long as you need to. But uh, for, for those of you and to the degree that you are willing and able to lean into these other in-person avenues of community that we do have, please do so. Um, we are all having to set aside all kinds of things right now, all kinds of preferences, but may we not set aside our commitment to following Jesus in community together. Um, so I hope, I hope you will jump on our website, find out, uh, see where you can sign up for house church, join a community group, 
um, the the new things that we're going to be bringing up to you. I hope you'll you'll consider really leaning in with your full energy. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, we hope that our, our rhythm moving forward is going to be to get kind of a quarterly financial update uh, from Russ Lacey, one of the pastors at Door of Hope Southeast, who's serving us uh, with with part time of his of his role uh, to oversee the finances for Door of Hope Northeast. And so um, I am going to turn it over to Russ and he will give you kind of the update of January through June. Hey guys, it's Russ Lacey. Uh, I am the executive pastor over at the Southeast uh, Church. And uh, you may be asking, why am I here? Why are you listening to me? Uh, if you're part of the plant, you, you probably already know me, but if you're new, uh, the reason that you're listening to me today is because part of my role uh, at church changed back in January when all this started, when we began the, the, uh, the move out for the Northeast. Uh, and what, what my role is, is, is partially to operate with the family of churches to provide uh, financial resources uh, to, to take care of the books, uh, to pay the bills, uh, to take care of giving records, uh, but also things like HR, payroll, those type of things, as well as facility issues. And so that became part of my new hybrid role. So I work uh, both for Door of Hope Southeast as executive pastor and as an elder, uh, but I'm also the, the primary person that is work, working across both bodies. So you'll see me occasionally coming in, giving what we call a family financial update. Uh, I just wanted to encourage you guys, uh, just with how God has worked over the last six months. When we started this experiment, we had no idea where it was going to go. We didn't know uh, how monies would, would flow as we had people move out and come to the Northeast. Uh, we made a guess. Uh, we need $13,000 a month in order to pay uh, for rent and for uh, payroll and, and those type of things uh, and really not knowing uh, how long might the Door of Hope Church family have to help subsidize here. Well, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, it took one month. Uh, the first month in January when we started this, uh, we had to help you guys with $500 to make it to the end of the month. The next month of February, you paid that back, and you've never looked back. Uh, the giving has grown almost every month over these six months to the point uh, where you guys have been self-sustaining uh, from the get-go. Uh, that is a miracle of God. That just doesn't happen in, in the church planting world, and I want to encourage you uh, to have a heart of thankfulness in the middle of this craziness that we live in. Uh, God is at work and he's at work here at the Northeast. I wanna share just a few things um, from, from the money, uh, actual money side. I've got a little slide that will come up uh, and this is what I'll use each time to give you an update. And it's very simple format. It gives you income items and expense items and big categories uh, and then three columns. One, an actual, uh, what do we actually bring in or spend? One, um, budget, what do we budget, what do we expect, and then the variance, uh, and then at the very end, where are we at with cash? Uh, so those are, those are the things we'll look at when I come back uh, to share with you. Uh, what I want to say off, off the cuff is expenses are, are pretty static right now because we're not operating, we're not, uh, we're not, wrong words, we are operating. We're just not opening the front doors on Sunday mornings. Uh, but most of our expenses, payroll, rent, utilities, those don't, don't fluctuate, but we're not spending as much money on, on Sunday operations. So we have a little bit of buffer there. And so when, when you look, total expenses, uh, over the six months, we spent $100,000, uh, but we budgeted one hundred and seven, dollars So we're actually better by $7,000. But the real kicker is the income. I want you to look, ties and offerings, you guys gave $133,000 over that six month. We expected and budgeted 92. You're $41,000 better than budget. Uh, the the 30,000 is, is the, the uh, money that we gave as a church family to the Northeast plant to help go ahead and start some ministry 
um, activity beyond just those basic payroll uh, rent type things. Uh, and you brought in a few other benevolence monies, that type of thing of 3,000. Uh, so you brought in 166,000 where the budget expectation was 122, that's $44,000 better. Uh, you guys, uh, God has blessed you. Uh, you've been faithful. Uh, just want to encourage you uh, and, and encourage you to be thankful. This is a great report. Finally, down at cash, just so you know, uh, what we normally try to do is we try to have two months of operations on hand at any time. For you guys, that's about $30,000, about $15,000 a month. Uh, so to have $66,000 in the bank is is really twice uh, where uh, we, we try to at least keep it at. What that does is allow you guys to go ahead and move out and begin to move out in some areas of ministry. I know Cam will be sharing with you over the coming days and weeks, uh, but allow you to move forward and and not be hamstrung with where where is this going to come from. God has provided uh, our needs, your needs, during this time in a great way. So just want to celebrate with you this morning. want to thank you for letting uh, me come and, and uh, bless you. Uh, bless. Uh, have you put up with me on this Sunday morning? Uh, but love you guys. Miss seeing your faces. Can't wait to the day I come and give you a family update in person. All right. Well, thanks again to Russ for coming over and shooting that video for us and giving us the update. Uh, it is a lot to celebrate. Um, I also wanted to highlight uh, uh, that because of your generosity, like just as Russ said, we've we've been able to begin to be more planful and to take on more ministry initiatives uh, because of your generosity. And so I just want to highlight a few of those right now. First is uh, is our local ministry partnerships. Um, we really do believe that part of being a faithful church involves both creating a healthy, um, as healthy of a church community as we possibly can that, that is for our people and, and that is getting our people together and caring for one another and doing all that sort of brother to sister family stuff that we've been reading about in the, the book of First John. Um, but, but also, um, it involves loving the city of Portland beyond our immediate church community with both the good news of Jesus and just tangible acts of service. Um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, um, or we, we especially don't want to half-heartedly step into important work in an ill-informed way uh, and end up doing more damage than good, which is often what happens. Um, so we have opted to, to come alongside organizations and ministries that are already doing really good, faithful, informed, important work with populations that we think are really near and dear to the heart of God. Um, so we, we want to champion these organizations and the work that they're doing um, by doing a number of things. One, we want to offer prayer on their behalf. Um, two, we want to offer a platform and, and a rallying point for our people to give their time and their gifts and their energy to these things. Um, and then third, we, we want to make a commitment as a, as a church body to give a regular monthly percentage um, of our overall church budget to these organizations that we might uh, bless them and, and sustain the work that they're doing. Um, and so uh, the elders uh, recently have, have landed on four organizations to be our first wave of these ministry partnerships that we're doing these things for. And that's uh, number one, Faithful Friends. Uh, number two, First Image. Number three, Know Me Now. And number four, Portland Rescue Mission, each which serve really important populations in our city and, and do amazing work. And so we just want to come alongside what they're doing, let them teach us, let them coach us, and let them put us to work, both uh, our money and our time. So you'll be hearing more about each of these uh, as, we, as we go here. Uh, but we want to encourage you in the meantime, go on our website, click on the serve page, and you can read about each, find links to their website. Um, and if you just feel compelled to start reaching out about how you can serve, do it. If you feel compelled to give financially to them, do it. We commend them all to you. We think they're all uh, doing incredible work uh, to love and serve Portland. So that's number one. Number two, uh, just want to remind you, you've probably seen something about this in our newsletters, but um, we have uh, established now a Door of Hope Northeast Benevolence Budget. So that means a percentage of our 
monthly budget uh, goes to a growing pot that's available to come alongside people in the Northeast community, uh, in our church specifically, um, who have fallen on hard financial times um, and are really in need of emergency financial assistance. And so uh, this is especially important as we continue to navigate the extended uh, economic fallout of COVID-19 and the shutdowns that have have been in place. Um, So uh, we just want you to know that that's there. Uh, If you are in dire need, reach out. We do have a protocol and a policy that governs that because we want to be good stewards of, of that money. Um, but reach out if you are in need. And then similarly, if you desire to give uh, some to that just directly, you can do that through push pay uh, s- straight to the benevolence uh, budget there. Um, so that's number two. Number three um, is that our we just wanted you to know that our, our elders felt compelled and agreed in July to make um, one-time financial gifts to a couple of organizations that we think are, are, are just really timely for us uh, right now. One is the Equal Justice Initiative, um, which does incredible work to fight mass incarceration and excessive punishment in the U.S. Um, and then the Northwest Church Relief Fund, which provides economic relief to churches and pastors of color, specifically in the Northwest, who've been hit hard. Uh, but it was motivated by when COVID-19 hit. And so um, our church has given from our budget to both of these. We think those are important. If you would like to go above and beyond that and give to them, you can find uh, links in our racial justice resource list on the Northeast website. Um, we, we commend the, the work that both of these funds do um, to you. Um, Finally, um, we have a short video message from Jesse Van Hoogen, who served as our kids ministry coordinator for the months leading up to the launch of our worship gatherings in March, and then for the first part of how we transitioned into this weird time of COVID-19. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jesse. Hi, Door of Hope family. This is Jesse Van Hoogen. I helped out with the children's ministry over at the Northeast, and um, I wanted to share some news about my family and I and also say a farewell. Um, We have had a a few crazy months in this already crazy year. We feel as though God is leading us to plant a church in Boise, or at least begin the process earlier than expected. Um, If we've had a chance to talk to you, you probably know planting a church has been on our heart for a while now, and it's been a large part um, for us coming to to the Portland area, but Obviously, this this past year, um, there's been a lot of disruptions and that kind of thing. And so it's kind of caused us to to stop and and kind of be quiet and pray and ask um, some people and ask questions um, about God's timing and about uh, what should we we should be doing. And so um, through the process, we decided that moving earlier um, was what we needed to do. And as some of you already know, we just recently moved to Boise. It is um, bittersweet for us. We are excited to do what God is calling us to do, but we are um, super bummed to leave um, such wonderful people. I know the time we had together was was short, but I am incredibly thankful for it. You all were super gracious and, and loving in the Northeast church planting process, putting others in the Lord's calling before yourself. The other day I read um, 1 Timothy 4.10. It says, for this reason, we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God who is the savior of all people, especially of those who believe. And I thought of you guys and the the faith that you guys have in Jesus. you make sacrifices in order to serve and follow him. You are willing and you and you labor and strive for the gospel's sake. John Barry and I, we've talked about that just our, our hope is that we can, um, that we can go now and do what uh, to others, what you guys have done to us and, and how you have treated us. We just hope that we're able to do um, that for others. We will, we will miss you guys so very much and, um, and we'll be praying for for the Northeast Church um, constantly. And um, we will definitely be back to visit and as often as we can, uh, we're not not too far away. And if any of you guys wander over to Boise, we'd love to have you. 
love to host you so um, just give us a call or email or whatever um, anyway we love you guys well I just wanted to say thank you again to Jesse um, she has served incredibly faithfully and effectively uh, giving significant time and energy and heart uh, without pay uh, because at the time we didn't know if we were going to have any budget for a children's ministry at, at, uh, when we started. Um, so uh, you'll likely be hearing more from her and from John Barry as they seek to plant this new church in Boise. Um, we want to stay connected with them. But for now, uh, I just want to say thank you to Jesse. If you're watching this, you have served faithfully. We have been blessed by you. Um, and if you're not Jesse and you're watching this, uh, I encourage you to reach out to her and, and say thank you as well. Um, you played a pivotal role for us an indispensable role as this new church was just forming and uh, you left it better than you found it. So thank you so much. Um, I wanted to mention as well, we do hope to bring a new children's ministry coordinator um, onto the team for, for possibly around 10 hours a week paid, um, probably sometime in, in a few months, you know, a few months down the road. Uh, what we're trying to do is assess when we might be able to hold worship gatherings that have children's ministry as part of them again. It's kind of unclear <laughs> right now, frankly, um, but that's so that's going to inform the timing of when we really start uh, beginning our interview process and so forth. But um, you can expect us to move forward, uh, filling that role again when the time is right. If you have thoughts on that, feel free to reach out to me as well. But just wanted to inform you of that. Um, I think that's it for right now. Thank you for giving a little more time than usual to this update. I hope it helps you feel connected. Hope you're excited about the things that are going on. And again, thank you for your generosity as we really can set a course for what the next kind of six months to a year of ministry could look like for us at Door of Hope Northeast. Uh, so we're excited. I hope you're excited. And we just see the Lord's blessing all over this new community in really powerful ways. So uh, let's celebrate that. Thanks for your time. Uh, and we will hopefully see you soon. Take care.